This is a video covering a demonstration of my Relay computer running a program. And it's the last in a series of 2020 update videos. In the first video, I covered the architecture for my computer. And from that, moved on to the opcodes that can be used to control the computer. Given the programming is quite difficult with those, I then in the third video introduced a series of mnemonics. Using these, along with the architecture for the computer, enables you to write a program, and in the fourth video, I did just that. This is a program to calculate the Fibonacci sequence, and it will start by loading 1 and 0 into registers A and B, and then loops round, copying B to C, A to B, and then adding those together, and then carries on doing that again and again and again, until we get to the point where the carry flag's set. At that point we've gone beyond an 8-bit result and we need to stop. At the left here you can see the mnemonics that are shown in the table at the bottom left in red. Once I designed the program I then need to convert them into the opcodes that the computer will understand using the table at the left in blue and green. In the fifth video I took us on a tour through the computer as it currently stands. So all that remains now is to take the program and put that together with the relay computer and what do we get? A working relay computer. And that's what I'll demonstrate now. Okay then, so we'll, uh, we'll start by loading the program in. So uh, effectively just one line at a time. Um, so for the first line we'll set the uh, first instruction and then just deposit next and that puts into memory. And then we just need to repeat that for each line of the program Like so. Now I'm intentionally going to put a, uh, a mistake in here just so I can show again editing that uh, back out again. And there's the last line of a program. So what we want to do now is just check this program back. So uh, what we'll do is um, currently the uh, program counters uh, pointed to the next location in memory. But if I uh, load these values into the program counter down here, clear that down, we're basically pointed to the start of the program again. At this point, I can examine the value, and what it'll do is it'll load it from memory and put it into the instruction register here and here. Uh, and then just basically read the program back. Um, so if I want to examine the current location, I can just go down. Uh, if I want to examine and move the program counter on one, I just press up. So that's the first line, second line, third line, fourth line, and so on. So you can see here I've got a, uh, a bug, so I'm going to go straight past that to this point. So now I'm at the end of the program, um, but what I need to do is I need to go back to that location in memory. So I know that was in location 9, uh, which should be an 8 and a 1. So if I load that into the program counter and examine that location, I can see that indeed it is the wrong value. But what I can do is I can clear that value out and deposit and then just confirm that that definitely is there. And if I then deposit, uh, check the next location, I can see that it is the value as I was expecting. So that's all good. So uh, let's uh, reset the program counter and let's uh, try stepping through the program. So we'll uh, set the sequencer to uh, prime the sequencer down there, like so. So you can see that's now in uh, its lowest position. Um, and what we'll do now is we'll uh, just step through the program. So. So I can see my set AB is coming in. So after that's complete, we have uh, should have one in register A, which we do. Uh, so let's carry on onto the next set AB instruction, which now will have loaded zero into uh, B, uh, which it has. And then uh, we should now be moving the value of B into C which we can just see just there. So it's uh, selected B and loaded C. 
and next we should be moving A into B which you can see there so there's A going into B and now we're on to the ALU add so there we can go we can see the opcode at the top there you can see it's ALU uh, it's added the two values together and that should then deposit into A once the instruction's finished and now we're into Uh, yeah, and there we go, there's one down there. And now onto the first go to instruction. So this one will uh, basically go to itself if the um, carry flag is set. The carry flag isn't set, so we can just step through that. You can see the sequence goes all the way up to 24 down here. And it's now loaded the J2 register. And now there's a point where we take the jump, so it's selected the J register. So we've got that location in memory um, on the address bus, but we haven't selected the we haven't loaded the program counter from it because we're not going to take the jump. So the clock carries on. And the next instruction is another go to. So we're going to load the zero into the upper J into the J1 register, uh, and then one zero into the uh, lower J register into uh, J2, which you can see down here. And then we get to the point where we decide we're going to take a jump. So this will always jump back to uh, line two of the program. Um, so if we keep going, you can see here now we've selected the J register with the value, uh, value of two onto the address bus, and we are loading the program counter this time. So the program counter down here now is a value of two, and effectively we've gone back to the, uh, to the starts of the moves. So we should now be back at the uh, move B to C instruction. Which we are. We then move A into B. Add them together. So by the end of the add instruction now, we now have two as right as it should be. First go to carry on. Second go to, we will jump back to line two. Okay, let's watch it one through to one more add. So here comes the add. And now you can see we've got three down there in the A register. So if we let the computer carry on itself.
And there we go, that's got uh, stuck on the carry now, so it just keeps going in an infinite loop because it's basically got to the highest value it can calculate within 8 bits. Um, so I know you all like to see these things uh, running at uh, a quicker speed. So what I will do is I will quickly pop into the back of the machine and quickly flip some dip switches. Should be uh, twice as quick. So we'll uh, move the problem counter on just to get the sequencer back to the start. Um, reload the program counter and we should be good to go again. Okay, obviously that was uh, half the speed, not twice the speed. It's difficult to do this upside down. So again, let's just move the sequencer on. Take it to a uh, go to instruction. There we go, and load, and go. And there we go at the finite loop again. So this will obviously be a lot better when we can do um, halting. So do the computer just stop and uh, maybe we'll treat ourselves and even ring a bell when it stops as well. Um, right, okay, I should be able to go one, one step quicker. And I can't take it any quicker than this because I think it will lock up if I go quicker. Um, so if I remember rightly, uh, so let's try this. And there we go, we got stuck again. So uh, that's pretty much it then. So finally then, just to finish off, I'll uh, I'll just set the computer running with the uh, with the front case on, just so you can see what that looks like. So uh, we we're as we were before. So I'm just going to again move the uh, move the clock on and let the problem counter and put my covers on. go. Okay.